Hi, well we're going to look at a really incredible Naginata here. This one has a 13th century blade, which we're looking at right now. Look at that condition. And the fittings, the rest of it, are from the 16th, maybe early 17th century. So this was obviously a highly prized blade by a notable master, whose name was, or shorthand name was, Jitsua. And his son went on to create the Samanji, sorry for the pronunciation, a school of craftsmanship. The Naginata was an important samurai weapon, often described as a sword on the end of a pole, and you can see that in action here. And it came to prominence right around the time that the one we're looking at today was made. It was of course a samurai weapon, but could also be used by foot soldiers and warrior monks. Most famously, as far as the quote-unquote other, it was also embraced by women in Japan, a tradition that continues to this day. Look at this picture, here's a class of women watching their instructors. A woman could, and did, use this on the battlefield, but it's mostly remembered as a kind of a domestic weapon as well. If a woman was home needing to defend the household, then this was the go-to weapon. How fantastic is that picture? And speaking of fantastic, back to this masterpiece here. You can see that the blade is broad and strong, and it's curved, but not so much that it would uh, negate thrusting as a viable technique, where some specimens that you see pretty much does take that off the table, basically selling out for the slash. Now, this one got refitted in the 16th, 17th century, as we mentioned. Well, it's such a prized piece of work that, of course, they were going to go all out when they refitted it, and they did. This is Mother of Pearl, splayed all along the shaft. I've never seen one like that. So this weapon is really the result of two master craftsmen who were centuries apart. Not the most workmanlike handle. <laughs> this was going to hang on a wall from this point forward, but exquisite to look at, and you can see a little detail there below. Just above the suba, the guard that is, and Naginata's often had a guard, which for good reason, because a blade might slide down towards your hands in combat. You get what I assume is the maker's mark, or maybe it's the house, you know, the, the clan that purchased the sword, I really have no idea, sorry. And back to the metalwork. It's been kept in basically perfect condition, low these, you know, 800 years, which is why you can see my reflection in it over on the left. There it is on the right, along with the rest of the display. They had some cool stuff, the likes of which I'd never seen, so I'll get to that in future videos. And back to the point. So clearly a just, I don't know, superlative example, right, of the Japanese Naginata and a historically important specimen on top of that. Very, very cool. Hope you enjoyed looking at it. Thank you.